Hello. In this study, we're going to look at one Bible verse. Only one. And we're going to look at the conflict that this Bible verse has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten words in this Bible verse. Ten words of this Bible verse will conclude if you're saved or not saved. It will conclude if you are a Christian or not a Christian. It will conclude if you are a Bible believer or not a Bible believer. Ten words of the Bible. One Bible verse. And I got much cut and paste in that I did that we're going to read. That in 2020, I'm doing this thing, and I'm using the fair use copyright uh, law of information I gathered throughout the years. And the apostate church that we're in today and throughout the centuries, that men will be lovers of themselves, that's not the birth we're looking at. And... To be saved, you must believe the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Mary had no sexual relations with no man, but the Holy Ghost came upon her. And that holy thing, spoken about in Luke chapter 1, became the infant, the embryo, the birth of Jesus Christ. No Joseph, no human man. You must believe that. You must believe that Jesus Christ is God incarnate, 100% God, 100% man, and he is God. You must believe that. You must believe, the Bible says in Hebrews, you must believe in God. Hebrews 11. You must believe that Jesus Christ suffered and died, according to the scriptures. You must believe that he was he was buried. You must believe that he arose from the dead three days and three nights as Jonah was in the heart of the of the of the inside the earth, hell, three days and three nights, according to the scripture. You must believe only Jesus Christ is able to save your soul by his blood atonement and nothing else. No membership, no, no baptism, nothing else. You must believe God is God. That there's no gods. You must believe that there's no works for salvation. The work is upon Jesus Christ. The merit is upon Jesus Christ. Now you must also believe not only in God and God is Jesus and Jesus is God. You must believe in creation. God the Creator, Jesus the Creator, John chapter 1. And our verse today, if you take your Bibles, Genesis 1 1. Say, what's so hard about Genesis 1 1? In the beginning, God. There's our first problem. In the beginning, God. That rules out the, the atheist. That kind of rules out the agnostic. Agnos is not sure if there's a God or not. The theist believes, well, there's a God, but no, you got to believe in the God of the Bible. In order to be saved, in order to be right with God, you got to believe that the King James 1611 Bible, the Holy Word of God, the God that spoke to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that Israel are his people and still are his people. And when we open the pages of Genesis, the beginning of reading your Bible throughout the in the year, and the study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth. We run into be, the problem in the beginning, God. And we just conquer the atheist because he doesn't believe in God. We've kind of conquered the agnostic because he's not sure. Now we're looking at the God of the Bible, Jehovah. Jesus, you have knocked out all those who go in favor of Zeus, the Pope, 
Allah, and all the other Kabillion gods out there. Because it can't be the multi-gods of the Indian faith. Because it didn't say in the beginning gods. <coughs> it says in the beginning God, big G, not little g, not S. That God is not Allah. And it has never been and never will be God, uh, Allah. And the God of salvation had a eternal before time, eternal past. He was, he's always been there and always been there. He'd never been born. And he, he created all things. And we're in a period of time now called years, months, weeks, days, hours, seconds, minutes. And then we have an eternity future coming with no time again. Our God of the Bible, our God of salvation has always existed. In the beginning, God. And we rule out religions. We rule out idolatry. In the page of the Bible, God's against idolatry. God's against images. God's against statues. God's against high places. God is against altars. God is against you doing what you want to do to please God. We've got the God of the Hebrews. Many nations, the, in the beginning God, we've got United Nations that are against the Jewish people. And God says, as far as the Jewish first people, if you curse them, I'm going to curse you. So you can't say in the beginning God. And hate the Jew. If you hate the Jew, you can't stand with the God in the beginning God. Because God in the beginning, <laughs> that beginning of God says later that Israel is the apple of his eye. And you cannot say today in 2010 and before 2010, 2021 and 2000. 30 at the Lord tarries, you can't say, well, God loved Israel and he's all done with them. He's finished with them. You can't say that because that's not in the beginning God because God says, hey, listen, they're my people. Now, they're set aside right now as a corporate group, but individually a Jew can be saved. So when we come to the only verse we're looking at, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God, 1, 2, 3, 4. Four words, and we run into a controversy. All right. They say, uh, just recently I read Donald Trump said he's going to allow prayer in the school. Big deal. All right. Well, you can't pray in school. All right. Let me show you a Christian who can't pray in school. All right. Let's say I got, I got my tray of food here. All right. I've got the cardboard pizza. I've got the jello. I got that, whatever that salad is, and I got my carton of milk. I'm going to show you how you pray in a, in a school you can't pray. I just showed you. Now, what about the religions that make a, make a show of their prayer, like the Catholics and, their, and the Protestants that have their prayer book and have their beads and, and the Mecca and uh, Islam that get on their prayer mats? Those are open prayers. Those are prayers that people can see. I'm, I'm in the classroom right now. I'm in a, in a public classroom. I'm not allowed to pray. The teacher hands me my test. How do I pray for that test? Okay, I'm going about the test. Who says that the Christian of the Bible is to make a big show of prayer? You don't have to make a big show of prayer. Big show of prayer saying, look at me, I'm going to pray. That's religion. And Jesus said, as, the, as the, the hypocrites stand on the street corner, look at me, pray. No, the President of the United States has opened up for other people to show their prayers. A Christian can pray without saying a word. And no one would even know. But in the beginning, God. And our nation says, in God we trust. Which one? Back when I grew up, we had a thing called the, the telephone book. 
And in the telephone book, in the back of the book had nice yellow pages. Yellow pages were the, the business section only of telephone numbers. There would be ads, there'd be listings, and there'd be listings by, you need a plumber, you go to P, look up plumber, and there's all the plumbers that are listed in the telephone book. You need an electrician, you go to E, there'll be an electrician. You, you need pizza, you would, have, you would have restaurants and then find pizza, then you would have pizza. It would be under two classes. And if you want to find a church, you will look under church or religion. And there'd be a whole list of churches. And you would look under synagogues for the Jewish people. And you would look under whatever your classification of your religion in the, in the yellow pages to find your church, your assembly hall, whatever you call your place of worship. And throughout that book, the entire, the white pages and the yellow pages of the phone book, you would find many religious organizations and categories. That's all the gods of America. And when you go to a big nation, big city like Los Angeles, and you would find volumes and volumes of, of, the, of the phone book for Los Angeles County, there'd be more and more and more and more religions. So when we say, in God we trust, which God? Because you got Catholics right down the road. You got this guy, You got this church right down the road. I got the Jehovah Witnesses a couple blocks away from my house right here. And I don't honor their God, but in God we trust, they are allowed to practice their religion. Of not going to war, because the Bible says, that, you know, thou shalt not kill, and they misinterpret the scripture. And they try to bring up my driveway. I won't let them in my house. A Jesus who is not God. What about the Catholic Church? There's a few, few other streets away. And they allow, by the government and God we trust, they're allowed to say that they can eat and drink the literal body of Jesus, which is forbidden by the Bible. And then all the other churches. Which God? In the beginning, God. Which one? Don't get me into the realm of the, the, the country India religion because they got multiple gods. And they got a, a cow god where they worship the cow and the cow peas. They go there and wash their hair in the, in the holy pea. We've got cow gods here. We got the, the big arches. We got a, gal, a, 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 a cow god that can't spell chicken. Texas worships cows with the, the horns, the horn of the bulls. There are cows found in the sports teams and bulls and cattle. Which God? In the beginning, God, man, we run into a great controversy. But there's one God in the public school systems of America and the world that is rejected, and that's the God of the Bible. There is one book rejected. There is one God rejected in the country of China today. There's one God rejected in the country of, of Russia today. And I'm looking up the thing right now. Let me get this. All right. There are 52 countries that forbid, that forbid the Bible. All right. So when we come in the beginning, God, we got a controversy. Which God? There's a Catholic God. There's a Protestant God. There's a Jehovah Witness God. There's a Muslim God. There's an Indian God. There's a, there's a Native American God. There's a God of money. There's a God of finance. You know, the Catholic Church has a God Saint Day for 365 days of the year. Every single day has a Saint Day. You know, India has multiple gods. The Native Americans have multiple gods. Mexicans have multiple gods. The Inca had multiple gods. Africans have multiple gods. There are multiple gods in this world, both past and present, and probably multiple gods, there's the Antichrist coming in the future. There are multiple religions throughout the world, probably religions man hasn't even, even discovered yet. Which God? In the beginning, God. Which one? 
I tell you, the God of the Bible, the God of the King James Bible, the God that said of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you're my people, and I love you, and I'm going to give you a specific law. I'm going to give you commandments. I spoke to you from Mount Horeb where the mountain set on fire, the mountain quake, and you heard my voice. And I had a representative called Moses. I called you out of Egypt. I have given you a promised land, a land grant that the Palestinians hate, the Iranians hate, the Iraqis hate. The Saudi Arabians hey, the United Nations hey, America has eh, England said, well, we'll give you, you know, Jordan, but we'll give you some land and all that. There's been great battles and great wars fought over one piece of land that God says I've given to Israel. My God supports and loves the children of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, not Ishmael. Which God? In the beginning, God. Which one? Remember I said in order to be saved, you have to believe in the virgin birth. You have to believe that, that God was manifest in Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ, God had to suffer and die according to the scriptures. It was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. There are religions out there. There are gods out there that believe Jesus never did that. Jesus was a nice guy. Jesus was a good prophet. Jesus was a teacher. That's what their gods teach. That's not the God of the Bible. Paul goes up one day to Athens and he goes, oh, here's an altar to the unknown God. There are gods unknown. And what did he do? He spoke to them about the God of creation. He spoke about them, the God of heaven. He spoke to them, the God of Jesus Christ. Telling you that there is one God. And there's a God called science. There's a God called education. There's a God called entertainment. There's a God called sex. There's a God called finance. There's a God called self, me, myself, and I. That's the individual trinity, unholy. Me, myself, and I. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. We got another controversy here. We're only going to do one verse. That's it. That's our verse. Ten words. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now we come to creation. In order to be saved, you must believe in God and you must believe in creation. God, the creator. You can't go with the prophet, the false prophet, Darwin, and all his beginnings and all the people before him and all the people after. He is not a God. He's a God, small g, and all the people of him and by him and from him and of him and came before him are small g-o-d-s's. And there Jesus Christ is the monkey because from the monkey became man. That's not my Jesus. That's not my God. My God said, I created in the beginning. Let there be light. Let there be this. He spoke the world into existence and all that there is. We're not going to look at that. We're going to look at, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. I'm saved when I believe in evolution. You're not probably not saved. Because evolution denies God. Completely. Well, see, I'm a theistic evolutionist, and I'm saved. Theistic, okay, there's a God, agnostic, but God made everything, and when he made everything, he said, okay, go do what you want to do. I'm going to bed. I'm going to take a nap for a million years. Have fun. But look, God made it, and he just set it off to do whatever he wanted to do. He made this big fireball, made whatever it was, and just, you know, let things happen. That's theistic evolution. Theistic evolution is, uh, I got the word in my, I can't say it compromising Christianity so we can get the scientists happy with us. That, that's what theistic evolution is. We don't want our scientific group of people that I work with angry with us. So we will put God into science. We won't put science into God. We'll put, science, we'll put God into science. Now let me read you some things here. And I got a whole bunch of stuff here. All right. The Roman Catholic Church has long accepted 
at least not objected to, no disapproval, evolution theory. Pope Francis is not the first pope to publicly affirm evolution is compatible with the church. In 1950, the human eye generous, Pope Pius XII, XII, yeah, the Catholic teachings on creation could coexist with evolution theory, 1950. Pope Johnny DePaul II went a bit further in 1996, calling evolution more than hypothesis. So there's the Catholic Church. There is their God. The Pope is the Catholic Church God. The Pope has more authority of traditions in the Catholic Church than the Word of God. Now, my has more authority in the word of God, which is Jesus, John chapter 1. 2013 Pew Research Center survey. 60% of Americans say humans have evolved over time. But only half the group, 32% of the U.S. Americans overall, believe humans and other living things evolved solely due to natural processes. Which is... A, accepted by most of all the scientists. It says about a quarter of the U.S. adults, humans and other life involved, but their evolution was guided by a supreme being, which is theistic evolution, but they just don't want to say God. Supreme being. A series of court decisions prohibit the teaching of creation or intelligent design in the public schools. Our court system, the Supreme Court of America, says you cannot have Genesis 1-1 taught, Genesis 1, Genesis 2 taught in the schools. Of the people, for the people, by the people. One nation under God. Boom! In spite of efforts in many American states to ban the teaching of evolution in public school or the alternatives to evolution, courts in recent decades have consist cons consistently rejected public school curriculum that veer away from evolution theory. So when, when schools say, you know what, evolution is, is junk, evolution is a lie, we don't want it. Or you know what? We're going to teach evolution and creation, creationism. We'll give the students both views. The court says, yeah, no, don't do it. Only the teaching that there is no God and it came from something which is nothing, evolution. Edwards and Algerd, 1987, for instance, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that a Louisiana law requiring public school students to learn both evolution and creation, both science, violated the U.S. Constitution prohibited prohibited on the establishment of religion. Hey, you know, I'm all for that. I'm a creationist. I believe God created all. But I believe, hey, you know what? Let both of them be taught in the schools. Let the student decide. Bring in the scientist. Let him show what they got. Bring in a, a King James Bible-believing preacher, hellfire. Let him teach the student the creation. Let them get both. And let God shine or let the monkey shine. In God we trust. Let the evolution God speak and let the God of the Bible speak. But the Supreme Court said no. Don't give me one nation under God. When your supreme, your supreme court, your supreme gods said we can't have God in the public school system. Don't give me in God we trust. Baloney. And if the Baptist has got a God of the President of the United States, let the President of the United States shut the Supreme Court down. Let the President of the United States say, I am a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. I am going to honor God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the King James Bible, and all others can go pack their bags and go to another country. Because this nation was founded upon the pilgrims and the Geneva Bible in 1620. But no, 
the Supreme Court says you can't have creation. You must have evolution. <laughs> God, we trust. No, you don't. God bless America. Don't do it, God. They don't love you. You know how many Americans wants to shut down me preaching the gospels on the streets of Daytona Beach? You know how many Americans want to shut down preachers that preach on the streets, people that knock on people's door with the gospel? You know how they want to shut down the public ministry that the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel? You know how many of those Americans want to shut you down? Many of them. God bless America. One God under, uh, one nation under God. No, it's not. Sorry, you believe in a lie. No more. You may not like what I'm saying, but hey, there's plenty of gods out there. And the Bible, the King James Bible says there are gods. Small G-O-D-S or small G-O-D. Now, theistic evolution believes that there is a God. Woohoo! That God created the material universe and the life therein. And biological evolution is a natural process within creation. And evolution is a view that it's a simple tool that God employed to develop human. So God made nothing, the evolution, and from the nothing, the nothing exploded. And here we are. God made the one cell amoeba in the ocean that there were no ocean. And that that one cell amoeba came walking on the beach. God, God took off. God said, okay, do whatever you want to do. He came walking on the beach. And he found himself an electric razor where there was no electricity. And he shaved his hair off his hairy ape body. And here we are. Killing everybody in wars. So we can fight over land. That's evolution. Everything's getting better and better and better, but cancer's killing, and we got hospitals, and we're building more hospitals, and we can't figure out, and we got to have more medication, and we can't come up with a better health care system, and we can't come up, we got to build more prisons, we got to have more police departments, we got to hire more police officers, we got to hire fire department, because evolution's getting so good! Wake up! We ain't involving, we're decaying because of sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're sinners. We're not evolvers. God made the earth. God made a giraffe. God made an elephant. God made a man. God made a woman. Evolution say man came from apes. Where did the female come from? You know, there is no sex in evolution. We just evolved. God says, hey, the man and woman, they were naked. <laughs> Listen, I've been married twice. I'm a widower, twice. I love what God did for man and woman in marriage bed. <laughs> evolution, there is none. Evolution has, has violated the marriage bed with adult, adultery and fornication. All the traditional mainline Protestant denominations support and accept theistic evolution. February 2006, on the 197th anniversary of Charles Darwin's birth, he wasn't born. He evolved. The great monkey man came out and said, hi, look at me. No, he didn't. He came from his mother's womb. What's evolution today as far as birth? Abort. Abortion. So on the 197th, 97th anniversary of Charles Darwin's birth, the mainline Protestant churches came up with Evolution Sunday, where the message that followers of Christ do not have to choose between biblical stories of creation and evolution was taught in classes and sermons, and many of the Methodist, Lutheran, Episcopal, Presbyterian, Unitarianism, Congregationalist, United Church of Christ, Baptist, and Community Churches went with the 197th Evolution Sunday birth of Charles Darwin. 
to promote it. Listen, I go to my Bible-believing Baptist church for my pastor to promote. I'm a sinner. I'm vile before God. God is almighty. God is wonderful. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I need to repent of my sins and get right with God. I need to get better with God. On the 12th of February, 2006, that Sunday, these denominations went out and said, all right, the monkey man, Charles Darwin. United Methodist Church affirms the creator God and supports the scientific study of evolution. And I quote, we recognize science as a legitimate interpretation of God's natural world. We affirm the validity of the claims of science in describing the natural world and determining what is scientific. We preclude science from making authoritative claims about theological issues and theology from making authoritative claims about scientific issues. We find that science descriptions of cosmology, geology, and biological evolution are not in conflict with theology. Man came from apes. That does not go against the Bible. Uh, United Methodist Church, read your Bible. In the beginning, God. Not in the beginning, nothing. We got a problem with Genesis 1-1. The United Methodist Church said, Genesis 1-1, erase it from your Bibles. From nothing, here we are to be nothing. And we're going to be nothing. And give us a billion years and we'll still be nothing. Give me a billion years by the testimony of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I'm going to a place called New, New Jerusalem where I will be made perfect like God. I'll be given a brand new body. No more tears. No more sorrow. No more death. No more sin. And to worship God Almighty and Jesus Christ upon the throne. With all those that got saved... But by, by my help, God using me and those who grew in Christ and got rewards and all that by the help that God used me. The, East, the Eastern, I can't talk. Orthodox Church. I, I was looking at that word. What's that? The Eastern Orthodox, Orthodox Church is divided into two large categories. There's compatibilism and dualism. The compatibilism hold the evolution science and theology as compatible and view them as complementary relations of God. In other words, yeah, evolution belongs to God. Not in the Bible, it don't. Okay? The dualists hold that evolution could be incompatible with faith. And they argue, you know, evolution, science, and philosophy based on the kinds of natural or with God's specific revelation is infallible. So, but there's still that stance. There's a possibility that evolution is of God, or at least theistic evolution. So we're seeing in the major denominations of People who are supposed to have a holy Bible, whatever the version, a holy Bible, are telling you when it comes to Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and they're saying, well, it's not God. There's something wrong here. There's something wrong. So let's keep on going. Find my notes here. Hindus view evolution include a range of viewpoints with regard to evolution, creation, and original life within the tradition of Hinduism. The accounts of emergence of life within the universe universe vary, but basically tell of a deity called Brahma. All right, let's stop right there. I'm not going to go any further. But Hindu and Hindus say it come from Brahma. My Bible says in the beginning, God. Brahma is not God. Brahma is not the God of the Bible. Brahma didn't do nothing because there is no Brahma. 
Brahma is a small G-O-D. I don't need to read any more. Hindus go against Genesis 1. 1. They're not correct. Some literal Muslims reject origin of species from a common ancestor by evolution as incompatible with the Quran. However, even amongst Muslims who accept evolution, many believe that humanity is a special creation by God. Even in Muslim with a Quran, not the Holy Bible, there are Muslims out there who believe in theistic evolution. They deny Genesis 1 1. It does not say in the beginning God created and let it go. Woo! Watch the whales beach themselves. It doesn't say that. And by the way, when the we when the whales beach themselves, what do they do? They try to cast them back out in the river. They try to cast them out in the water. They drag them back into the ocean, don't they? Leave them alone. They're trying to grow legs. Darn it. Leave the whales on the beach. They're going to grow their legs and walk off and become college professors. Stolly, that sounds ridiculous. That's what evolution teaches. They came from the water, came on the beach, grew legs and walked. And those same evolutionists throw the whales and the turtles back into the water. Hypocrites. Pharisees. Three of the four major denominations of American Judaism. Israelite. Reconstructionists, reform, and conservatives accept theistic evolution. They are denying the law, the words of Moses. Genesis 1 is the law. It's written by Moses. Moses and Abraham in the time of Jesus, it was, was prominent of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes. Moses and Abraham, they were the ones, the ones that, you know, these are the, these are the heads of our religion. It's the head of the, 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 the nation of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses is the head of the law. How dare you violate them? So I am reading out of the Jewish law. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and we've got three to four major denominations of American Judaism say, the heck with you, Moses. The heck with you, Jesus. Jesus said, did not God create man and woman, male or female? We got a problem with that today. They don't know what male and females are, but that's, don't get me going on that one. Outright rejection of their law, outright rejection of Moses. And God spoke to Moses. God said, I don't know, God wrote Genesis, but, you know, Moses, write this down. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. The three to four major dominations of the American Judaism reject what Moses wrote. Woo, you're going to hell. You can't be saved if you believe in theistic evolution. You can't believe, you can't be saved if you believe in evolution. Because Jesus is God and Jesus is the creator. Judaism within orthodoxy, there is much debate on the issue. What are you talking about? You mean those serious Jews? You see them, they, they got the beanie, they got their beards just right, and they go before the wailing wall, and they pray, and they do the Passover, and they do what the law says to do. And they, I mean, they are strict, and they're saying, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Um, I don't know if Moses is right there. I'm really not sure. And creation is throughout the Old Testament, the books that are found in the synagogues today. I say the Torah, and I forget what the other two names are. I am reading from the Torah, the Nathavim, the prophet, and the Ketuvim, the, the, the writings. The Torah, the Nathavim, and the Ketuvim speaks about what we're reading right now. In the beginning, God, God is the creator and the orthodoxy of Judaism to say, I don't think so. You're going to hell. Most modern orthodox groups accept, receive, approve of theistic evolution. 
and most ultra-Orthodox groups do not. So even amongst God's people, they're saying, well, I think Moses is a liar. I think Jehovah is a liar. That's in the churches today, too. <laughs> those who are in, in the Christian denominations and those who are Christians are falling away from the Bible to believe nonsense. Most Christians worldwide, as represented by statements from other governed bodies, so what, what, what the governed bodies means, the mainframe churches, the Catholic Church speaks for the Catholics. The Lutheran Church speaks for the Lutherans. The Jehovah Witness, I don't know what they call their church, halls speak for the Jehovah Witnesses. The Mormons speak for the Mormons. You know, as an independent Bible-believing Christian, no one speaks for me but the Bible. Listen, there are things that my pastor says, I believe, amen, glory to God. There are things I say, my pastor will say, amen, glory to God. And there are things my pastor says, I don't think so. There are things I say, my pastor will say, I don't think so. The governing body of an independent Bible-believing saved Christian is the Bible. But our facts accepting, receiving biological evolution as being fully compatible with their faith. People, Christians, brethren, the mainline churches say, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. <laughs> God, you're a liar. What they're saying. Do you know the fact that today, and and they're, they're changing evolution because evolution is dying. They have no facts about evolution. They can't find the, the loophole. They can't find the missing links. And evolution is dying. But it's not dying in the churches. It's not dying in the Christians. The Catholic Church has a long history of accepting the findings of science, including evolutionary biology. In other words, the biology is that they say man comes from apes. You mean Tarzan? You mean the planet of the apes? You mean the turtles that come alive and talk and do ninja things? Watch out for your cartoons. Your cartoons mostly are in favor of evolution, and your children are sitting there watching it. Christian children. The Mormon Church, estimated 15 million members, is, however, they support the modern science, including evolution, as compatible with their faith. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth to them. No. Unitarian, Unitarian Universalist Association, the UUA, generally, so not all, supportive of evolution. Let me read you here a chart. The denomination acceptance of evolution being compatible with their faith. You can match evolution with their doctrine, their tradition, their Bible, all right? Roman Catholic, yes. Southern Baptist Convention, no. United Methodist, yes. National Baptist Convention, USA, no. I got some footnotes here. Church of Christ in God, no. Let's see what A is. Go down to A. Assume position based on views of other Methodist, AME, Baptist. So there are some groups that says no, there's some groups that say yes. Evangelic Lutheran Church of America, yes. African Methodist Episcopal Church, AME, yes. Church of Christ. Church of Christ. Church of Christ. Unclear. <laughs> we don't know what Jesus Christ says, but we're the Church of Christ. <laughs> oh, International Circle of Faith, I don't know, no. Anabaptists, they say unclear. I don't know. Presbyterian Church, PCUSA, 
Yes. Calvary Chapel? No. Church of God Cleveland? No. Assemblies of God? No. Lutheran Church, Missouri, Snod? No. Episcopal Church? Yes. Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America? Yes. United Church of Christ? Yes. American Baptist Churches of the USA? Unclear. You have not studied to show thyself approved under God. You're going to be made a shame of the God of the Creator. Seven Day Adventist, no. Presbyterian Church of America, unclear. The Vineyard, uh, unclear. International Church of the Four Square Gospel, no A and a plus. What's the plus? They don't know how many people are in the church. The new apostle, apostolic, I can never say that word, church, no. There are denominations out there that will hold to Genesis 1-1 is a lie. You need, one of the questions you need to go up to the, say, uh, pastor, priest, rabbi, whatever that the head of that, that organization, church is. You need, the first question you need to ask now would be, my first question, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the only means of salvation? That's question number two. What's question number one? Do you believe in evolution? Or do you believe in the creator? That's number, that's, that, let that be your first question if you want to look to be in a membership of that church. And if the answer is, no, we believe in evolution, bye. Because if they believe in evolution, they don't believe in the King James Bible. They don't believe any Bible because Genesis 1-1 says, in the beginning God, which defies evolution. So let's look at some things here as we close. We're going to look at one Bible verse. And we got, we're at 47 minutes, so it, it might run out. ESV, ASV. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Uh, that's good. Because, uh, some of these I don't Good news, the good news version. God created the heaven and earth. All right, I get some credit there. Good news. In the beginning, God, in the beginning, God created the universe. The ISV, in the beginning, God created the universe. KJV, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. The Living Bible, when God began creating the heavens and the earth. The NASB, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. NIV, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. The New King James Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Uh, pretty much, Genesis 1-1 in the modern Bible, is pretty much, it's... There's some variation. But when the doctrine is that they teach evolution, theistic, theistic evolution, they're not in line with the Bible, whatever Bible, even if it be the King James Bible. I go into a I go into a fundamentalist independent. Bible King James Independent uh, Baptist Church. I go in there, I sit down at the pastor's desk, and I say, hi, me and my family are interested in joining your church. Sure. Do you believe that Jesus Christ, and only by Jesus Christ, is the only means of salvation? There's no works that you can be saved, but it's all upon the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Yes, I do. Do you believe the King James Bible is the the Bible of God. Inerrant, without error, I do. Do you believe that, uh, you know, there's only two offices of, of, of the church, the pastor and the deacon? I, I believe in that. Do you believe that you know, God has set forth baptism as after salvation, as a demonstration to the public that the death, burial, and resurrection? I believe that. Do you believe that the Lord's Supper ought not to be alcohol. It is not the literal body of Jesus. It is not the literal body of uh, of the blood of Jesus, but it's symbolic. I believe that. Do you believe in evolution? Yes, we do. Goodbye. Where did I go? What happened?
You violated Genesis 1-1. I'm not going to believe you on Genesis 1-2. And if you can't go with Genesis 1-1, I am not going to believe you on John 3-16. And I am not going to believe you on 66 books of the Bible when you can't get it right with Genesis 1-1. And I'm going to go so far, and I've already made the statement, I'm going to go so far as to say, if you do not believe in, uh, let me let me go, let me make a statement here. At the time that you were saved, because you can go apostate, let me make the statement. When you were saved, if you did not believe in the creator of God, it may not be your saved. Because if it's not the creator, God, and Jesus Christ, you are believing in the monkey man. You are believing in nothing as God. Hebrews 11 says you've got to believe. God. Let's go to Hebrews. All right, I was wrong. We're going to go to another verse. We're going to go to another verse. Rachel, take that from grandma. Might be important. I'm sorry about that. Hebrews 11. I'm sorry. Maybe a medical emergency. Uh, Hebrews 11. I really apologize for that. That call had to be taken. Hebrews 11. All right. I believe in theistic evolution. I believe in evolution. Hebrews 11. Oh, I'm in Hebrews 12. That's why I can't find it. Hebrews 11. Verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. you got to believe who God is. Who is God? The creator. So I'm going to make that bold statement. you got to believe in God as the creator to be saved. Now, you may believe that and later on you went apostate and you got flawed up. And evolution. You just backslid. You need to get right and repent. You need to confess your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That Lord Jesus Christ needs to be God. And that God needs to be creator. And if you sin after you're saved to believe in evolution, you need to confess your sins for he's faithful just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is unrighteous to believe in evolution and theistic evolution. That is not in the 66 books of the Bible. And beware, churches are falling for it. What? Evolution. They are leaving God for evolution. And evolution in the Bible spells damnation and abomination. Repent and get right and get out of that church and find a Bible-believing, King James, fundamental, independent, God-fearing, God-created church.